Hello and welcome to Pictorial Planet. My name's John Finch. Today we're going to be talking about temperature again. We're going to talk more about how I keep consistent temperature in the darkroom and I'm going to give you a tip. So there's a lot of good reasons why we need to keep our temperatures so accurate. And remember, there are three really important things we must be consistent about in the darkroom. Number one is temperature. Number two is our agitation. That has to be very consistent. And number three is our timekeeping. We have to be very consistent with our time. We're looking at the temperature and the reason it has to be so consistent is a, one, if we develop at different temperatures, we're going to get different results and we don't want different results. We want consistency in our results so that we can print them or scan them and know that the photograph we took all that time and effort in photographing is going to come out nicely, exactly how we expected it. So we really don't want temperature changes that ruin our development cycle and create all these different negatives. So temperature is important for that. But there's another reason for temperature being so important too. And that is reticulation. Now, the emulsion of your negative is a gelatin which within it has the silver halides dissolved into the gelatin. If that gelatin is expanded and contracted, expanded and contracted, it causes what's called reticulation. And this ruins your negatives. It's like a blotchiness, like um, almost blotchy dots all over them. And if you get that, there's no recovery from that. You can't save those photographs. So we do not want reticulation. And the way to stop that is to keep our temperatures within all our chemicals and our water at 20 degrees centigrade, or at least within two degrees centigrade of our developer. It's very important. Now, I'm going to tell you how I do it. And there's a secret to this. It's a very simple secret. Volume. Volume is everything in keeping temperature constant. The more volume something is, the bigger something is, the harder it is for that thing to lose or gain temperature. So I'm going to show you how I use volume to my advantage. Now, the first thing is I use a huge amount of water. So buy yourself a jug this size. This is a four quart or four liter jug. And I use this to get my water at temperature. Let's do that right now. You get to know how much hot water to put in compared to cold. So you can be reasonably quick at filling this jug up. Now, it's 14 degrees at the moment in the darkroom. 14 centigrade. And I'm having a look at this. And the water's at 23 and a half. Putting more cold in. 22 and a half. Nearly there. Ah, we're coming down nicely. 21, 21.1. Okay, so we have four plus liters uh, here of 21.1 degrees water. And I'm going to fill this tray. Again, it's all about volume. So I'm going to fill this with this water. Now, the more water I've got in there, the longer it will stay at a constant temperature and the slower it will be to degrade in this cold dark room and spoil the, the temperature constant that I'm trying to create. So again, now I'm going to give some more in here, get this back up again. And this is going to become my stop water for a water stop bath and my wash water there we are 20.6 20.6 is good so you see I'm within three quarters of a degree there of 20 and I'm expecting this to slow slowly cool 
very slowly. So by the time I get to use this for my stop bath and to use it for my water wash, it will be down to around 20 degrees. It's about volume. So here we are. We've got this big tray here full of water. I can have a quick look, see what temperature that's at. We're at 20, 20.5, 20.6. I'm very happy with that. Now these, my fixer and my stop bath here. Oh, so I'm demonstrating using a stop bath for this particular developer. Um, for a pyro, I would use my water for a stop bath. So um, the stop here and the fixer here are cold. I got to bring them up to temperature. So I get another tray and I get hot water, as hot as I can put in there within reason. You don't want to boil a kettle and put boiling water in there. And again, volume. I have filled that tray with hot water. I'm not putting half an inch in or an inch. I'm putting, I'm filling it right up to the top. So here are my stop bath and fix. I pop them into that hot water. I'm going to get my, my thermometer here and I'm going to stir this stop bath. We're going to watch it coming up to temperature. Now, the more hot water I've got in, the more volume, the quicker this is going to come up to temperature. I'll speed up the video now so you can watch this come up. Now she's coming up to 20 now, but watch, I'm going to let it go a little higher. I take it up to 20.5 because I'm expecting it to lose a little bit of heat over the development time. Now the fixer, notice I didn't need to wash the thermometer from stop to fix is quite a normal situation. So that's a little hotter, the fixer, because again, that's going to be even longer before I get that into my tank, into my developing tank at the end of the session. Before, if I'm a little worried because it gets a little too warm and that got to over 21. And the reason it got hotter faster than the stop, of course, is because it's got silver dissolved in that fixer. So it's got metal in it. So the metal absorbs the heat faster. It's gone to 22. Still within my two degrees of the developer, although I will check that temperature before I use it. So when I've done my stop, whether it's a water stop or whether it's a acid stop like this, after I've done that, I have ceased development. So everything can go slow after that moment. And I will check the temperature of the fix and make sure it's within my one degree tolerance that I like. So that's how I bring my temperatures up. I've now got these into this nice bath of water, huge volume of water, and it will stay at that temperature for much, much longer, well long enough for me to complete my development of time of 10 minutes, 15 minutes. I've got this great big jug of water and that is at temperature. And because of the volume of that jug, it will stay at a temperature much better than if it was small amounts. So that is one of the secrets for keeping your temperature good for your development cycle. Well, thanks for watching that. Volume is so important in keeping your temperatures consistent. I wanna thank all the people that ask questions and leave messages on the YouTube channel. I really appreciate those. The emails I get are marvelous. Thank you so much for your emails. I mustn't go without thanking my patrons you're great and I really appreciate you guys. People buy my book every month. It's marvelous and thanks for that. Um, I'm loving doing this channel so I really appreciate you all. Please like, subscribe, do all the usual stuff, ring that little bell so you get told every time I bring a, a YouTube out and I guess Friday we've got a YouTube chip tip coming up so if I can say it a YouTube tip so I'll see you then.